We've seen how nature has inspired the way robots look, how they move, and even how they act in concert in swarms. But living things have also inspired engineers on a more fundamental level, the very stuff we make things out of, our materials. Many of our modern materials have taken their cues from the natural world, especially plastics. Silk, the product of worms, inspired nylon. And the search for a substitute for rubber led to the invention of polystyrene, the stuff we often call styrofoam. But natural materials also hold hidden secrets, tiny structures invisible to the naked eye that can give them nearly magical properties, properties we can mimic. For example, the tips of microscopic hairs on the feet of wall-climbing geckos have led to the creation of material for wall-climbing robots. So the hunt is on. What other secrets might living materials reveal? I've traveled to Harvard University to meet materials scientist Joanna Eisenberg. She's taking me to see a plant with tiny structures on its surface that play a slick trick, one we might use for new materials in sticky situations. Oh, creepy. Little shop of horrors. What is this plant? This is a pitcher plant, carnivorous plant. It eats stuff. It eats insects. It's called the pitcher plant for its pitcher-shaped leaves. Though when it comes to ants and other insects, these pitchers throw a mean curve. In dry weather, ants can easily walk on the lips of the pitchers using their sticky, oily feet. But in wet conditions, the ants and their oily feet get a little shop of horrors surprise. <laughs> Here's how the trick works. On a dry day, the surface of the pitcher plant looks like this. No problem for the ants. But add water, and it sticks to the bumpy surface, creating a slippery wet film. A slip and slide for ants. All these insects just slide into digestive juices inside the organism. They fall in? Into hydroplaning inside this, the plant. Cool. To Joanna, the pitcher plant's slippery when wet strategy seemed a promising start for developing new non-stick materials, but only a start. It evolved this structure to capture prey. It didn't evolve this structure to create these slippery materials on metals, on plastics, on glass. So this is where material scientists come. Let's design something similar. Taking the pitcher plant as inspiration, Joanna has developed a new non-stick surface treatment, a new way to keep stuff clean. She calls it slippery, liquid-infused, porous surfaces or slips. We start with a big piece of aluminum. The right is untreated. The left has slips. So we're going to try putting some stuff on each half, and we'll see what sticks. And what slips. <laughs> well done. First step, chocolate sauce. Haven't I seen this on late night TV? I hate getting chocolate on my aluminum. <laughs> and on slips. Look at that. It beads right off. Now how much would you pay? Cleaning off the chocolate with water works, but not as easily as slips. By gosh, Phil, you didn't even need that water. It rolled right off. But let's raise the stakes. Next up, motor oil. Oh, Phil, you're ruining this perfectly good sheet of oh, aluminum. aluminum. That'll <laughs> never come off. What? It rolls right off. While well, this one leaves a stain that is not going to be removed even with washing. It's and actually on. getting even dirtier. And on the slip side, no contest. Well, I can't imagine anything much worse than motor oil. <gasps> Liquid asphalt. If we had a studio audience, they'd be going, oh. And on slips. Come on. 
even Tar rolls off like off a duck's back. Seriously, it's an amazing display of unstickiness. And it works in a totally different way than the current king of unsticky, Teflon. Teflon is a plastic polymer, a long chain of repeating molecules. It has a carbon backbone with fluorine atoms tightly bonded to it on the outside. The fluorine acts as a shield, preventing the normally reactive carbon from bonding with anything else. The secret of Teflon's unstickiness. But slips works in a totally different way, on the pitcher plant principle. First, Joanna adds a porous material less than a hundredth of a centimeter thick to the stuff she wants to protect. In some cases, just by spraying it on. Then she adds a liquid, often an oil, that seeps in. The layer and the liquid are formulated to attract each other, keeping the liquid in place. Just like the water on the lip of the pitcher plant, the liquid creates a smooth, non-stick surface on top. Joanna believes there are lots of applications. Graffiti a problem? Not on the side that's been treated with slips. Slips helps prevent ice buildup by repelling water before it has time to freeze. And if ice forms, slips defrosts more quickly, which may lead to applications in refrigeration and the de-icing of planes. It's a clever use of biology as inspiration. By inspired is more taking some clever solution and maybe reformulating it in a different way, using something different that nature doesn't use, but the design is preserved. So slips would bear the label based on an idea by nature. That's right. Yeah. And of course, the research continues. Ribs. Slips, it's absolutely repellent. Slips cleverly adapts one of nature's innovations, 